guys, my name is Courtney and this is Classics with Courtney. Today I'm going to be talking about the best books I read in 2016. So right off the bat, this was not my best reading year. I didn't read as much as I wanted to, but also I didn't read as many good books. I didn't read as many classics or literary fiction. I read a lot of books that unfortunately I didn't enjoy or just were okay. That's another video. Let's talk about the best books I read. So this list I believe is 13 books, some of which are graphic novels, some of which are plays. One of the books on here is a reread for me. That would be the Harry Potter series. I read both of these illustrated editions this year. So that's what's on my list for best books is the illustrated I just love these illustrated editions. The first one is gorgeous and wonderful and the second one of course is the same. I read both of them this year and I'm so glad I did and I can't wait for the next one to come out next year. The same Harry Potter story you know and love just accompanied by beautiful illustrations. This book is a little bit cumbersome and hard to hold while you're reading it but I do really enjoy them. Okay I have to talk about this book because it was so addictive and so great when I read it. That is The Love That but the world by Emily Henry. A lot of people do not like this book on booktube. Actually, it receives really poor ratings. I realize it's problematic. Kind of sci-fi element behind it doesn't make a lot of sense. I loved it anyway, and it was so good. I gave it five stars. Even looking back on it and seeing all the problems, I still know that I really love this book. I really don't care that nobody else liked it. I liked it and that's all that matters. It takes the trope of love at first sight or kind of like fate or destiny or being connected with someone but just does it in a way that convinces me that it could work. I don't really believe in love at first sight, at least not in the real world. I don't like insta love in my books. I don't know. It worked. It just worked for me in here. And I love it. Another fluffy romance read is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. This book was so cute, so amazing. I gave it five stars. It just gave me the warm fuzzy. It's everything that I wanted. It reminds me of the Hilary Duff Cinderella story where they're like sending secret emails to each other and they don't know who each other are. But it is so gay and so good. It's just so cute and I love it and I think everybody should read it. It was good. I also read the first two books in the Agnes Chase series, The Gods of Asgard by Rick Riordan. This is the sort of summer. Hammer of Thor is also on this list. I'm just kind of combining them into one book. These were two of my favorite books that I read this year. They were so good, so fast paced, so familiar and warm and lovable just like every other Rick Riordan book. But for me it's a top contender for some of my favorite Rick Riordan books ever of all time. Dinah's Chase is funny and charming and just so genuine. I connected with him instantly and loved him. The side characters are amazing and diverse and interesting and unique. The plot is funny and humorous and just everything you want in a Rick Riordan adventure story. While I do find a couple plot holes and a couple questions I want answered, I just kind of overlook them because I just, I love this book series. Another new favorite I read at the end of this year was Cinder by Marissa Meyer, a popular booktube favorite and it is worth all the hype. I was not convinced when I first heard it. I did not want to read this series, but I'm so glad that I was in the mood for a Cinderella story. I just wanted that stupid fairy tale love romance and I got it, but it wasn't stupid. It was so good and so well done. The characters are interesting and amazing. The plot is intriguing and I am so excited. It was such a page turner. It left me on a cliffhanger and I was so mad I didn't have the next book to read. So fast paced, I read this in like six hours. It was so good. Like I said, I didn't read a lot of literary fiction this year and unfortunately like a lot of them were really good but none of them really stood out to me. One of the books that did catch my eye was The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. This is Toni Morrison's first novel. It is just so beautifully written. It talks about such interesting theme. It touches your heart as a story. I love the literary techniques that Toni Morrison is trying to explore and it's one of my new favorite literary fiction novels and I definitely recommend it. Getting to the plays, I took two Shakespeare classes so I read a lot of plays this year. A lot of them were repeats for me so I'm not going to really talk about them. One Shakespeare that I read for class and I'm so glad I did was Macbeth by William Shakespeare. I've been wanting to read Macbeth for a really long time and I'm so glad I did. Macbeth is slowly becoming one of my new favorite Shakespeare's. I like the dark Shakespeare's. Hamlet is another one of my favorite. Shakespeare is incredibly rich and dynamic. The story is dark and crazy but I love it and I can't wait to see all the adaptations for this. I've only seen one. Shakespeare, he's my man, my god, and I just I'm obsessed with Shakespeare, but this was definitely my favorite Shakespeare play that I read this year. Another favorite play I read was Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead by Tom Stoppard. I read Tom Stoppard's Arcadia, which was totally confusing, but totally wonderful at the same time. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, while highly acclaimed, does have a lot of criticism for it, and 
I don't know why. I thought it was amazing. It blew my mind. The movie especially was very fascinating. I actually watched the movie first and I'm glad I did because there was a lot of director choices that Tom Stoppard made in the film which I think were really good and really convincing that he couldn't have done in a stage production. Yes. It's witty and dark and dry wonderful humor and I love it. It's also just like it just it blew my mind but I love it. Another favorite has to be The Hamilton, The Revolution by Lin-Manuel Miranda and Jerry Moon MacArthur. This is just the giant nonfiction book. I think this actually won the Goodreads Nonfiction Award this year and I helped because I definitely voted on this. I love Hamilton. I loved this. It was such a good read. Fascinating. I was I was enthralled. As far as graphic novels, I read a lot this year. One of my favorite, and I'm so sad I did not continue on with this series yet, was Deadly Class Volume 1. I want to read this series so bad. The first novel was just kind of this crazy, I don't even know, po was it postmodern? I don't know. It was just, it was all over the place. It wasn't really constructed well, but the illustrations were amazing, the themes were amazing, and I really want to dive back into this series because it has everything I want, assassin, school. I need to get back into this because I love the first volume. Of course I have to put Skip Beat on this list. While this is not my favorite series, it is such an addictive series and I read almost the entire series which is 11 volumes this year. I think I read the first two last year and I continued on with the series and read the next like, I don't know, 13 bazillion volumes which is about 200 plus chapters. I love Skip Beat. I am just so in love with this series. I am just so hooked on it. It's funny. It's quirky. It's just so strong with characters and everything. I'm gonna start gushing. I, I love Skippy. I have to include this, especially since I read so many volumes this year. Another new series I picked up was A Silent Voice. This is new, but it's becoming a fast favorite with me. I was so enthralled by the movie trailer that I had to read it. I couldn't wait for the movie, and I'm so glad I did. The illustration is wonderful and gorgeous. The thoughts are messy and just feel so real, and they're well done, and I just can't wait to see where the series goes from here. Are you really surprised? Yona of the Dawn. Of course Yona of the Dawn is on this list. Akazuki no Yona is one of my favorite anime mangas of all time. And they started publishing them in August of this year. And I'm so glad they did because I want to collect these. I love this series and I'm so excited. Just fantasy, romance, characters, banter, just everything you want. And it's so well done. Some of the plot points are kind of tropey or conventional. The author is able to tip it on its head and make it fresh and new and interesting. I can't wait to see where the series goes from here. I also have a bonus book on my list and that is Everything Everything by Nicola Yu. I finished this in 2015. I finished it before I made my top 10 or whatever of 2016 so I didn't get to talk about this one because I read it after I made that video. But I promised myself that it would be on the list for this one. I tend to go towards the cute romance but at the same time if they're cheesy I just can't get into them but man I love this book and I can't wait to read her next book. I think everything just hit my heart and made me happy and it was a cheesy romance but for some reason it didn't bother me which is why I made it on this list. It was just so beautiful and well done and I loved it. Okay guys those were my top 16 reads of 2016. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later and keep it classy.